Uh, a bit of sad news that we saw earlier today. I picked it up on Twitter and also Discord. A lot of people were talking about the voice actress, and I believe she also did the motion capture uh, for Tess in The Last of Us video game, unfortunately passed away. Uh, it's, it's obviously sad when anyone passes away, but she was 45. I'd consider that young to be passing away. When you think of someone passing away, you think of someone like in their 90s, in their 80s, you know, at the end of a long life. Not someone that's 45. 45, like, shit. So, um, yeah. Yeah. She did a fantastic job in the game. Uh, as did a lot of, if not everyone, uh, in the game when it came to the motion capture, the voice acting, creating the world, creating the characters, and bringing everyone to life. So it's, it's, it's really sad when something like this happens. It, it, it really is. It, it's shocking. Um, and really sad. So, like, you know, <laughs> if you have sort of anything you've been worried about or wondering about and thinking if I should, you know, pop over to the doctor, do it. Uh, I said the same thing about your pets, you know, if you notice any lumps or anything like that, please go to the doctor. Uh, you're better off them telling you that it's nothing rather than, you know, you're finding out the hard way. I, I know uh, my neighbor's dog, Una, who was a rescued greyhound, uh, she passed away. They noticed a lump, they went to the vet, and unfortunately they were a few days too late. By just a few days, so like... You know, and humans are the same thing, right? Uh, so often people just think, ah, it's nothing. Ah, it's nothing. It's just, you know. <laughs> so like, you know, <laughs> just putting it out there. Please look after yourselves. Look after each other. I know uh, uh, I, I was hounding my uncle to get a checkup because, you know, he's, he's like 60s and obviously like, you know, Slavic people don't want to get a checkup. And I'm like, Mate, when's the last time you went for a checkup? And it's like, checkup? And I'm like, well, at the very least, do a blood test. Like, you're 60, right? Um, doesn't want to do it, doesn't want to do it, doesn't want to do it. And I kept telling him as a cautionary tale, you know, like, my father would never go to the doctor. And uh, by the time he went to the doctor, you know, it was too late. The cancer had already spread everywhere. So he was, like, ignoring all the warning signs uh, until, like, literally there was blood everywhere leaving his body. You know, by then it's terminal. Uh, and so as a cautionary tale, you know, you should go to the doctor, you should go to the doctor, you should go to the doctor. And like finally after three years of hounding him every single time I see him, he went to the doctor. Uh, they did a blood test. They did a blood pressure test. You know, they did all that stuff. And the doctor refused to let him go home and booked him in for emergency heart surgery. Uh, his arteries were more than 90% blocked. He was a walking heart attack waiting to happen. He ended up having a triple bypass. Yeah. One of the main arteries pumping blood to his heart was more than 90% blocked. And now he's like a spring chicken. Now he's got more energy than he's had in the last 20 years. Because like he's only been getting, you know, 10% of blood flow. Now he's just like yeah, crazy like. I'm not going to say running, he's got bad knees, but like, you know, he's going up the hill from his place to here uh, in record time. Whereas before, there's no way he's walking up that hill. So, uh, you know, look after yourselves, please. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, I get blood tests done, you know, like before you have to do any tournament, you have to get a blood test to make sure you don't have like any STDs or something because, you know, like blood spills and you don't want someone with an open wound getting infected or something like that. So thankfully, I get them passively, but like, please go to a doctor and actively and get yourselves checked out because, you know, like shit can go wrong, man. Like you don't even know. Eh. It, 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 like, just, just, just do it. Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. All right. On a lighter tone, we're going to watch episode three of The Last of Us. So far, so good. I really like where they went direction-wise with episode two. Very, very minor commentary on my part. 
Uh, my biggest standout was like the ladder. Like, please don't swing on a ladder. Uh, that's mostly me because, you know, I have to go up and down those things. Uh, and if anyone's worked in construction or ever had to climb up a ladder on a roof or anything like that, you know not to F around with the ladder. Like, it's important, you know? Steady surface, both legs on the ground, like flat, you, you don't know, swing on that thing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was it but other than that really good episode really good acting i, I absolutely love the world world building people were mentioning that it was filmed in canada i would very much like to go and explore canada uh, hopefully when there's a change of administration because i'm kind of scared of dictators um so i'd really love to check it out i heard to avoid canadian winter uh, because it gets really, really cold and to the point that, you know, all the water freezes and you got like minus, minus 20 degrees, which would remind me of Yugoslavia back in the day. But like, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to go when it's minus 20, 30 degrees. No, thank you. I'm going to go when it's, you know, at the very least spring or autumn or something like that. So I'd love to check out Canada. I heard there's so many national parks. Uh, I heard there's so many lakes, uh, especially on the part towards, you know, where the U.S. is. And you could just drive and camp and explore and take in all of nature and everything. Like, I'd love to do that, honestly. Um, it'd be amazing. A friend of mine was in Canada for three years. Funnily enough, he was stuck there during the entire time during COVID. He's all right, thankfully. Uh, but he had the opportunity to live there, to travel around, to just enjoy it all. So i really love to check it out. There are supplements you could take that are bare minimum you can do but yeah at least go for a full everything checkup at least every few years if you don't want to do precautionary checkups like yeah uh ever since 2019 like in november when you know there was like news on the internet of stuff going down in china i started taking uh supplements i made sure i had zinc i made sure i had like everything um and then when things officially got announced in january like Three months later, they're officially gets announced. Uh, you know, everyone was like, please look after yourselves, get your vitamins, get everything, you know, because you want to have your body as strong as possible when something happens so your body can either fight it off or your body can heal. And then uh, it also just makes you feel great, you know? If, you're, if your body's well-nourished and you do exercise and, like, you've got all the nutrition, you, you feel different. You feel a lot more energized, you know? You don't rely as much on, like, coffee and things like that. Yeah, the stores wear zinc empty for months, man. Mate, I stocked up in November. Alright? I had toilet paper, non-perishables, zinc, like everything. In November. People knew months ahead. The internet's crazy. <laughs> the internet's... Like, everyone's a conspiracy theorist until they're proven right. But like, anyways, uh, that aside, that aside, that aside, uh, let, let's check out The Last of Us Episode 3. All right, let's kick it off. Let's kick it off. Let's kick it off. Episode 3. Still waiting for that Sopranos to start playing. Whoever did that intro did a phenomenal job. I'm not even going to ask the amount of effort that went into that. Like, I'm not even going to ask. But they did a phenomenal job. It doesn't beat the Game of Thrones intro. I'm sorry, but that thing is just phenomenal. But this is pretty damn good. And the music, just like, it's really good. I think it goes really underappreciated. The amount of hours and effort people put in to create things like this. <laughs> you just take one look at the project file layer number 4962 not even gonna go there
Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you condition your fists. So this stops happening. Otherwise, every time you fight someone, your fists get all cut up and you're bleeding and crap. You don't want that. Start hitting the punching bag without gloves. And then after that works, start hitting trees a little bit. You don't have to like pound the tree, but you know, just tap on it a little bit. And then after a while, you can start hitting rocks and sand and stuff. Conditioning. Ah, uh, he's doing a makeshift grave. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, but nature is beautiful. Nature is freaking beautiful. Look at that. That's beautiful. I can almost taste the pine in the air. Jesus, imagine how that must smell and taste early in the morning when the air is cold and fresh. That's magnificent. Beautiful but deadly depending on the situation. Can't be as deadly as Australia. Actually, it can. Sorry, my mate from Canada was mentioning. Uh, uh, what's the plural of moose? I don't know how to say the plural of moose, but you know what I'm talking about. The, uh, you know, the, they're like deers with the massive antlers. A moose, right? Uh, they have them all around Canadian national parks. Apparently, he was driving through a national park. He, you know, he was going to go camping, check out the lakes, all that stuff. And not even two meters off the road was a buck, like a male moose, uh, with like four or five females. And he was like all cut up and, you know, everything. Clearly, he's been fighting with other meese. Is it meese? He's been fighting with other meese. Uh, you know, as you know, like males, they fight for territory. He who has the territory gets the ladies, you know, like kangaroos do it, lions do it, you know, nature. It's a bit like humans, but we fight for money instead. Anyways, so like this guy was not even two meters off the road. He did not give an F about the cars. And like, you know, clearly if you hit him in the car, he's going to get up. But basically they tell you do not get out of the car when they are around because they will kill you. Because they actually sharpen their antlers on the trees. And then when they fight with the other moose, they just stab them. So, you know, this one that's clearly been cut up and is the survivor and has the females. This, this guy's seen some shit. It's like the big red Aussie kangaroos that are seven feet tall. You're driving at like 120 kilometers an hour. You hit one. The front of your car is gone. Your engine, you know, possibly damage you know your radiator's gone god knows what you've hit him at 120 you smashed into him right he's like flung in front of the car he gets up and he starts belting the shit out of your car they basically tell you if that happens in australia do not get out of your car if he catches you outside the car it will fucking kill you worst part is if your car's not that damaged you can start driving away this kangaroo will actually start running behind you he'll chase you like these things are fast Worst part is if you find a lake or something and you see a kangaroo, do not go near it. These kangaroos will actually grab you and drown you. <laughs> you know, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, privileges in Australia. I in America, they have rights, right? They have rights, you know, the rights to bear arms and all this stuff. In Australia, we don't. We're, we're not a republic. We're, we're a nation of convicts, right? So we get privileges, we get permissions. So technically you could get just about anything in Australia if you get the permission for it, right? So like, I could technically apply for a 50 caliber sniper rifle if I wanted to. Chances of me getting it are low, but like you could. But one thing that a lot of people that live in the Aussie Outback do is like, you know, they ask for something like, it might be a sniper rifle or a machine gun. And they're obviously asked like, what are you gonna do with this thing? And a lot of these, like, farmers in particular basically say, Oh, I've got emus on my property. <laughs> the government's just like, here you go. <laughs> Would you like a bigger one? 
<laughs> That's how bad these animals are in Australia. Like, there's so many of them. There's 20 kangaroos for every person in Australia. There's like 28 million Aussies and probably over 150 million kangaroos. It's not a crime to hunt them. They're like, please, get rid of them. <laughs> emus, even worse. They tried to get rid of them. They declared war on emus twice and lost. Like, that's how bad the Aussie Outback is. <laughs> you want a gun and you live in the Aussie Outback? You'll probably get it. <laughs> uh, is Australia really basically Dark Souls 1? I'm assuming kangaroos are bosses. I have not played Dark Souls, but I have played Elden Ring. Um, and going by the wildlife in Elden Ring, simple answer is yes. Uh, I went th for a hike uh, when I worked for university we as a part of a team building activity. We went for a hike and there was a goanna literally like half a meter on the tree, perfectly camouflaged. And one of my managers, like she put her arm on the tree to rest. And I'm like, you might want to move that arm. He's like, why? I'm like, just move it off and I'll show you. She's like, no, tell me now. I'm like, right next to it is a goanna. And she's like, what are you talking about? And she looked and she couldn't actually see it. And then she moved her arm a little bit. She touched the goanna. It just started running up the tree. Like she freaked, she almost fell. We were on like a slope on a hill and she almost fell in a quarter and everything. Like my job was secure for six months. Um, like Australia is crazy. And then well, while we were doing this bushwalk, we actually saw a spider web that caught a bird. Like a bird's literally flying, flies into a web and it gets caught in a web. And a spider obviously caught a bird and it's going to wrap it up and eat it later. <laughs> Quick answer, yes. <laughs> the food pyramid is a little different in Australia. But it makes sense, right? The rest of Europe and everything was, you know, it was like colonized, it was populated and everything in Australia was kind of... I mean, people only came here on ships a few hundred years ago um, and the native aboriginals that lived here before that, they didn't really build on the land. They sort of moved around and they lived with the land. They didn't hunt animals to extinction and exterminate them uh, like a lot of other cultures do. So a lot of the wildlife in Australia, particularly in the bushland and, you know, like in the middle of the outback, because let's face it, you actually need water to sustain any sort of life. And if you look at the middle of Australia, what's there? It's, it's practically desert. You know, so, and Australia has severe droughts. So you might think that Australia is, like, just look at a world map. Australia is a continent. It's like the size of Europe. And we've got 28 million people. Just think about that for a minute. So we've only really populated the coastline and a little bit, you know, inside. But like a big chunk of Australia is still wild, untamed, you know, like, still the animal kingdom out there. <laughs> I mean, we get spiders like this size. I've seen them. And they're not scared. Like, s spiders will actually run for you, you know, so... Uh, you gotta be careful. So... <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, lad whirling alligators were the first Australian enemies there. Imagine an alligator with the mobility of a rhino. Yeah! So, what you're saying is Australia is hot southern Canada. I'm not sure. I haven't been to Canada, but maybe. Maybe. Kuma identifies as Australian using we a lot there. I mean, I've spent more than half my life in Australia. I, I would like to think that I am Australian. <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but does that mean that I am legally a convict? You know why Aussies say mate? Inmate. You know, I have to I have to like one thing. Is actually respecting the rifle. See? See? The rifle? The barrel is nowhere near the dirt or the ground. Respect. Man's looking after his rifle. I still gotta say, he didn't pick up an AK. I'm a little bit disappointed. Because that thing is, like, indestructible. And just like that, I want some beef jerky. Nice throw. If she complains about the food, I swear to God. At least say thank you. Only I've been in the woods. 
more bucks than I thought. <laughs> Look, I've been thinking about... I want your sorry. I wasn't going to say I'm sorry. I was going to say that I've been thinking about what happened. Nobody made you or test taken. Nobody made you go along with this plan. You needed a truck battery or whatever, and you made a choice. Yeah, that's something you tell to someone who just lost someone very dear to them. And not even saying thank you for the food. So don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. You can just tell that he was considering for a moment just shooting her. How much longer? Five hour hike. We can manage that. That's not too bad. A five hour hike isn't too bad. <laughs> Being Australian is a mindset. Australia is what you get when you send a thousand criminals to Mordor and they somehow win over the locals and they build a tribe there. Let's just say that the Aussie settlers didn't exactly win over the locals. Let's not get into that, but yeah. <sighs> I struggle to identify as one, well, mostly because of the government. Well, I think Aussie government has a lot in common with other governments. They don't necessarily represent the people nor do what is in their best interests. I am just surprised no one has yet overthrown their governments. <laughs> a country filled with ex-convicts has not yet overthrown a corrupt government. The irony! Hey, that's a very clear path. Someone's been through there a few times. Like, you don't get a path that that's... Okay, at least the bridge is in good condition. Fuck it, I want to go for a hike. Oh, you're from Idaho. Hello. Wait, there's an Aussie Sorry, emoji? No infected? Not often, no. What are you looking out for? People. People. Oh. Are Berlin's rank nice? Frank is. How'd you get that scar on your head? What? Is it something lame? Like you fell down the stairs or something? I didn't fall down any stairs. Okay, so what then? Someone shot at me and missed. See, that's cool. Shoot back? Yeah. You get him? No, I missed too. It happens more often than you think. Because you suck at shooting or like in general? In general. You know, seeing as it's just the two of us, I was thinking I should no. pro Cumberland Farms. You know, that's the telltale sign of someone that's had a gun around. They call it the gunslinger walk. If you notice someone that walks and one of their hands is sort of close to their side and the other one's just moving. You can tell they've had a lot of time with a firearm. It's the gunslinger walk. There's different phrases for it, but you can basically tell. Their walk is not natural. It's not 100% symmetrical. <laughs> Hang back a minute. I gotta grab some stuff I stashed. Stashed? Why do you have stuff stashed here? You ask a lot of goddamn questions. Yes, I do. Okay, uh, if I was him, I'd booby trap shit with a grenade and some wire, but, you know, The Walking Dead, the final season. So, are you gonna answer me or what? We had supplies on routes. We find ourselves short on gear, which I currently am, because... No way! You ever play this one? I had a friend who knew everything about this game. 
There's this one character named Melina who takes off her mask and she has monster teeth and then she swallows you whole and barfs out your bones. Uh. You know, for someone that spent a lot of time in military boarding school, you make a lot of noise for someone that just entered a building. Oh, man. You forgot where you put your stuff. No. I'm just zeroing in on it. It's been a couple of years. Okay, well, I'm gonna take a look around, see if there's anything good. Trust me, it's all been picked over already. Maybe, maybe not. Is there anything bad in here? Just you. Ah, getting funnier. You know, if this was Australia, there'd be like 50 spiders in this room alone. <laughs> it's not going to be that obvious, is it? Because that would have clearly been looked at before. There's a handle for a reason. Yeah. Oh god, it's gonna be an infected, isn't it? Please don't go down there. Please don't go down there. Please use a flashlight like a normal human being. Thank you. Please don't go down there. Please don't- She's going down there. Oh, of course she is. You don't even have a way back up! Clearly the stairs have failed. Don't go- You don't have a way up. Don't do it. At least let him know where you're go- Okay, she's securing an escape route. Fair enough. But it's still gonna take some effort to get up there. <sighs> what could go wrong? If this were Australia, there'd be a giant shelob sized spider there. We're talking massive. Catching humans in a web. Or Argog? Argon from Harry Potter? Whatever you prefer. Well, that's a surprise. Ah, it's probably nothing. Oh. Shit. Please don't go closer. Please just leave. Please just go back up. Did you at least clear the rest of the room? Please look around so there's no more. Like, the least you could do is double check. Like, just look around really quickly. You know, before you touch it. Did you not pay attention to what she said about all of them being connected? Cool. You just gotta let them all know that you're here, that's fine. What are you doing? You're trying to see if you can see? Okay, you're doing a science experiment. That's a great way to damage a knife, sticking it in someone's skull. Ellie? 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 over my ass now watch a bunch of uh what do we call them infected are gonna know they're here because it was probably connected 
via tendrils or something. What are you doing? There's not much ammo out there for this thing. Makes it mostly useless. Oh, you're just gonna leave it there. No. You see, this is why you pick up an AK. <laughs> you can use it as a bat. But, like, probably not. You know, one of the biggest problems that people have with the carbines is that people think a 5.62 is the same as a 2.23. Well, I might be getting it wrong with another round. They're almost the same size, but they're slightly different. And one of them is slightly larger and damages the barrel with usage. So eventually, the barrel becomes damaged and it's not as accurate. I forget which way around it is, but like, yeah. Which is why I just stick to Soviet firearms. Machine gun bullet, cut it a little bit shorter, goes in assault rifle. Very good. The Soviets kept it simple, alright? Fun fact, until my dad, I have ancestors from every American war. My grandfather was in Nam and his father was in World War II. I'm sure you have someone from World War I, right? You're flying one of those? A few times, sure. So lucky. Didn't feel like it at the time. Get shoved into a middle seat, pay 12 bucks for a sandwich. Dude, you got to go up in the sky. Yeah, well, so did they. Grim. Yep, and his wife shot rattlesnakes in the head from the front porch. Huh. Nice. So everything came crashing down in one day? Pretty much. How? I mean, no one's infected with the cordyceps. Everybody's fine, eating in restaurants and flying in planes and then all at once. How did it even start? If you have to get bit to be infected, then who bit the first person? You know, it's like having that conversation about AIDS. AIDS naturally exists in monkeys. Which means some guy fucked a monkey. And then fuck the human. And Hutchins calling. What the? Hello? Hi, I just went for a run and it's pouring and I've been under the tree for 10 minutes, but it's getting worse. And um, if you have any growth, just please pick me up. I'm on the, like, the second blocks away. There's you're, no more trees. You're two blocks away. Yeah, um... You might just have to you might just have to walk home and take a shower. Um two blocks as in like two roundabouts, so there's quite a bit of walk for me. I can't do much, Hachan, I'm in the middle of a stream. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Hachan, it was raining. Why did you go for a jog? <laughs> Rain means stay inside. Eh, it's the only way she's gonna learn. I picked her up a few times when she did this. Obviously didn't learn. Was it a monkey? I bet it was a monkey. It was a no, that's AIDS. A monkey. I thought you went to school. Fedra school? You know, it teaches how their shitty government failed to prevent a pandemic. Actually, the government didn't want to fail a pandemic. They wanted to get the pandemic so they could sell the cure to the pandemic and make trillions of dollars per quarter. Which they did, which is why most members of Congress made hundreds of millions of dollars in the last few years. Seriously, it's absolutely nuts. No one knows for sure, but best guess, cordyceps mutated. Some of it got into the food supply, probably a basic ingredient like flour or sugar. There were certain brands of food that were sold everywhere, all across the country, across the world. Bread, cereal, pancake mix. This is why I don't eat carbs. You eat enough of it, it'll get you infected. So the tainted food all hits the store shelves around the same time Thursday. People bought it, ate some Thursday night or Friday morning. Day goes on. They started to get sick. Afternoon, evening, they got worse. Then they started biting. Here's the thing, though. 
I understand how the, like, fungus works by, like, you know, physically accessing the brains of an insect and infecting it and then getting eaten and whatnot. Uh, but if it went into the stomach, the stomach acids would probably kill it, right? Which means it'd have to do something before it got into the stomach. So I'm guessing in the mouth or the throat, the saliva, something along those lines? There has to be a reason. Humans are weird. How crazy can a guy be to bang a monkey? Why do you think there are stories of mermaids? Spoiler warning, there weren't mermaids. There were just a bunch of horny sailors that had sex with fish life. And then they told stories of mermaids because they didn't want to admit that they banged the seal. Which is why many sailors hit seals with clubs to take out their anger on the things that they fornicated when they were stuck at sea. Hmm. Unless it had evolved an immunity or maybe it goes down the lung pipe instead. It is possible. Like, this, the whole spore thing makes a lot more sense because you've got your... And obviously I suck with human anatomy. But you've basically got like a shared pipe from your mouth all the way to your stomach. And then there's like a valve uh, for your lungs and then your stomach, right? And so if you're breathing, it's going to go down into the lungs, which, let's face it, doesn't have all these acids and stuff. And whereas the other one is your stomach, which is filled with like acids and all these other things and can dissolve all the food and bacteria and all that sort of stuff. Which is why in a lot of cases, you could probably eat something which is not good, but your stomach acids are so powerful that chances are they might be able to kill it. Whereas if you left it in your mouth or something, you know, your mouth and the germs are going to spread and all these other things. So the whole spore thing makes a lot of sense. But then it's like, okay, it, you ate it, right? And it went into your stomach. And then I got to be like, okay, well, how does that work? The astrophagus probably got spores stuck to it and it attached to the brainstem. This would allow it to read through most of the brain. Okay, fair enough. I would have also accepted something that, like, you chewed it, not all of it got swallowed, it started spreading, it went up instead of down, and then got to your brain. <laughs> Imagine that guy that was snorting flour. The first infected. Friday night, September 26, 2003. By Monday, everything was gone. Here's a question. What about the countries that don't have food? Like, there are literally some countries out there that don't have enough food. They're barely scraping by. Are they all infected? Or does it simply not spread that far because the developed world struggles to get things like flour? It makes more sense than monkeys. Thanks. Look, some guy fucked a monkey and then fucked a human and now we have AIDS. I'm just saying. Sure. What? We cut across the woods here. Isn't the road easier? Humans. Yeah, Ambush. There's, there's stuff up there you shouldn't see. Oh, no, I have to see. I don't want you to. Serious, Ellie. Can it hurt me? No. Be too honest, man. Should have said axe murderer. Whatever it was, I think it's gone. I'm waiting for a dead person hanging or something. Oh, mass graves. Really? That's it? About a week after outbreak day, soldiers went through the countryside, evacuated the small towns, told you you were going to a QZ, and you were, if there was room. If there wasn't. So the soldiers killed civilians on farmlands that were, psst, welcome back, that were spread out instead of just leaving these people. 
Because, like, I don't want to be that guy, but people on farmland with crops growing could probably survive this a lot better than someone in the city that relies on a supermarket. Like, I've spent time on farmland, and the only thing we were missing was the generator needed to power the pipes to get water out of the well. And when the electricity went out, you just had to manually do the thing to wind water. So the only thing you really need is rain. Sounds like the government to me. <laughs> the government. We can save people, or we can kill people. Let's kill some people. Like, fuck. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> all, all in the interest of stopping the infection from spreading. We're gonna go out of our way to kill people in mass graves. Like, sounds like the government. These people weren't sick? No, probably not. Because people on farms like this don't need to get things from the city. They're usually the ones providing it to the city. They were probably just gonna eat their homegrown vegetables and locally produced meat from cattle. They were probably the least likely to be infected and they were the ones that were killed. When you really think about it, governments really suck at doing anything. But it makes sense, because who typically works for the government? People that are not actually successful in their own businesses or can't get a job in actual private successful businesses. So you basically get the bottom of the barrel working for the government. And those are the people making decisions. No wonder the world's so fucked up. I kill them. Why not just leave them be? Dead people can't be infected. So... Genocide was your solution to a pandemic. What was the government doing? Competing with the virus for who gets more kills? The farmers would probably have their own seeds, meaning the government would make much less money on food. Money talks. Isn't that what the government's trying to do now? In a bunch of countries in Europe, they're basically increasing taxes for farmers because they're causing global warming. And then the government is buying up their farmland for pennies on the dollar and then selling it to private companies owned by billionaires. Like Bill Gates. So they have a monopoly on food. And then they just raise the food price and keep everyone poor. And food is one of those things you can't avoid not buying. Ah, yes. The local farmer is uh, causing global warming. Hmm. <laughs> and not those countries that are literal sweatshops that they can't even breathe their own air with how polluted it is. That fucking farmer with his crops and that fucking cow in the shed is causing global warming. Also, in regards to it spreading via bite over spores, spores makes more sense as it's how the original strain spreads. While via bites, it seems to be something in the teeth of the infected or saliva than into bloodstream. We'll see. We'll see. If it turns out that those, like, tendril things that we saw in last episode's kiss are like worms that sort of just travel on their own it's gonna be the weirdest thing ever because spores made the most sense but okay let's see where they go with this though i expect a movie theory episode on this and a mythbusters episode Remember guys, gated communities first. Everyone else, get in the ditch. You know, this is one of the smart people, but everyone would call him a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist.
Not today, you new world order jackboot fucks. Mandatory evacuation. All residents of the current zone and all outlying areas are required to evacuate. Please follow the instructions. All evacuees will be asked to provide identification and may be subject to on-site medical testing. Any evacuees resisting official direction will be detained. Wow, it's just like the real government. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh. So if you, yeah, my man. Oh, oh, I want one of these. I want one of these. I want to build one of these. I want to build a house with a basement. And then before they build the fucking house, I'm going to get an excavator, dig an extra fucking floor that no one knows about, pour a fucking concrete slab, literally build a fucking nuclear bunker, and then they can build the house over that, and then I'll get into it later. Look at this shit. Oh, he's got wine. Of course he does. Smart man. See, he's got a mask. And he's using a shotgun for home defense. Do you know why? Buckshot is a lot more effective than a pistol in home defense. You need to hit a lot fewer rounds to take him out. He's in heaven. He's in fucking heaven. He is literally in heaven. All those shit neighbors are now finally gone. With their bloody, uh, politically correct, no cow beef steaks. With no animal product whatsoever. And their propaganda about how he's a tinfoil hat wearing, uh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> See, he's smart. The only problem is that the fuel is gonna basically go off. This guy's basically in fucking heaven. Like, this is. There, there, there's several types of people. There's several people that would be like. Oh my god, the zombie apocalypse has started. And then there's those subset of people that have been waiting for it their entire lives. An AR-10 would be better. It's got a 7.62 instead of a 5.56. I'm just that person, but I tend to go with a Soviet because it's more reliable. Simplification is key. Keep it nice and simple. The less mechanism something has, the less likely it is to fail. They cut off the power. Yeah, he's got a diesel generator, baby. Of course, this motherfucker has a diesel generator. My man. Ladies and gents, if you haven't been taking notes, you should start taking notes. The only thing that I have a problem with is that he took that truck 
and rammed it at a gate. That truck doesn't have a front bumper. But apart from that, the rest was good shit. A home defense system. Mm, some guy's been learning from Vietnam. Yeah, his crops are coming along nicely. He's going to have food. He's got chickens. He's got eggs. Yeah, he can cure his meat. He can make jerky. And the man's eating good. And he's not wasting the oil. And he's eating a medium rare. My man. And according to the government and from what I've been seeing on social media, this guy is everything that is wrong with the world. He's, uh, he's self-sufficient. Uh, he can fix it himself. He can build them himself. He doesn't need the government. <laughs> he makes his own food. <laughs> he cooks his own food. <laughs> he is everything that is wrong with the world. <laughs> he's educated. <laughs> He knows how to get shit done. He's everything that's wrong with the world. He asks too many questions. Hmm. Someone's coming. Good, he's got proximity sensors. Keep coming. system it doesn't get old really it's not even that complicated good system and it doesn't have to keep fixing it every single time the mechanism will just pull the wire back itself the fact that he's just walking through the fire is the very thing that's pulling the trigger the thing stops, the thing falls, the wire goes back, the trigger stops getting pulled, and if it's a semi-auto, the next round just goes in the chamber by itself. He just has to go there once every god knows how long. The only thing he actually has to worry about is the firearm and the mechanism rusting from the elements. Which is why you get Soviet! Oh, what are you going to do with that? Clever. You've got a security gate. Let me guess, it's an electrified fence. Four years later. The only thing is he's alone, at least from what I've seen. We need at least someone to talk to. No, you don't. <laughs> That's the biggest mistake people make. You don't need people. This man is an introvert. I love it. All he needs is a pet. That's all he needs. It's like, I am legend, minus the pawn and the mannequins, and the simping for the first girl that he saw. No, oh, don't tread on me. Oh, who could have seen this coming? What is it? You couldn't pick it up on the camera? 
Ah, oh, I fell in. Are you armed? I mean, even if you did spot someone on the tree line, you've got yourself a shotgun there. <laughs> Your pistol would be more effective at range. No. Why did you take that long to answer? I don't know. I, I thought about lying for some reason, but the reason didn't come. But I, I'm just trying to get to Boston. Alone? We started with 10. But yeah, I'm, I'm alone. From where? Baltimore QZ. It's gone. Are you hurt? I just... Just a bruise. Up there. How'd you get that? Ah, it takes an injection. Boston is that way. You can make it by nightfall. I'm really hungry. You don't hold a gun like this. I'm sorry, the guy's an actor, but you don't hold the gun like this. You hold it like this. It's the cup hold. Both your fingers need to be pointed that way. You don't hold it like this. This is some fucking Hollywood shit that they came up with at some point that I don't know how. I can tell, this guy hasn't used a firearm in real life. Great actor, but he's not holding it properly. Would be useless in a gunfight. I haven't eaten in two days. I'm sorry, but god damn it! They were doing so well! Up until this fucking point! Alright. I'm sorry. They did so well. Doesn't sound very long out loud, does it? Feels long. I'm letting you go, so go. All right. Look, first, my name's Frank. Oh, yeah? yeah? Here's the thing, Frank. If I feed you, then every bum you talk to about it is going to show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch. It was a restaurant. <laughs> That's not the point. I, I won't talk about it to any bums or hobos or vagabonds, I promise. What's a vagabond? You already know I'm bad at lying. Or oh, maybe you're not bad at lying, you just did that so you could say you were bad at lying so he would trust you. Wait, I just recognized him. He's the actor that was in Park and Recreation. Mm hmm. Wander or Traveler? Gotcha. There! Yes! 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 A lot better! Almost there! See how his thumbs are now fucking together? What, th this scene wasn't shot in one take. This was done in two- multiple takes. The th thumbs here are separate. Before that, it's not fucking even using the thumb. And then here, it's like fucking right next to each other. This was done in multiple takes. I'm willing to bet this first take was where they told him how to hold it. And then as he kept shooting the scene, he just did this. Because it's uncomfortable. <laughs> but no one that's been trained with a fucking firearm would care about how fucking uncomfortable a thing is. <laughs> Alright, you're recovering. It's good. Ah. <sighs> Vagabond is a traveler without a home? Gotcha.
He's got running water. That's fucking luxury. I left some clothes here for you. What? Clothes. Thank you. Almost done. Although, can I have five more minutes? Sure. Sure. Thank you. This is amazing. It's hot water, isn't it? Just be like, you know what I mean? Don't waste it, especially in the... Lamb, eh? I'm just saying, this guy can cook. Tastes good when you're starving. Yeah, but not like this. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> ah, he knows how to pull. A man who knows to pair rabbit with a Beaujolais. That was I rabbit? I don't seem like the type. No, you do. Oh, flattery. Flattery. You know, if you're sitting down like that, I hope you're good with a cross straw because there's nothing more awkward than trying to grab a gun like this. You have to be good at, which is why you would actually want it the other way. But what would I know about guns? There is more. No, if I can't. <laughs> I want to. Believe me, but... Whew. <laughs> oh, thank you. He's basically baiting him to invite him to stay. Ah, manipulation. Thank you. You're welcome. The awkward pause. So I guess I'll be going then. But first... Uh. I've been staring at this the whole time. Is it antique? 1948. You know how much these are worth? Currently nothing. Ah, oh. oh, Louise. Tales of Hoffman. Yuck. These aren't yours. My mother's. Could oh, you oh. not? This is you. <laughs> so he's basically trying to make himself appear useful and worth keeping around because clearly he doesn't strike me as the farming type. Or the gunning type. Or the welding type. He strikes me as the I worked in corporate type. I know this food because I order it in a restaurant type. Oh. I have minimal to no survival skills type. Oh my god. 
It's my favorite. I took music lessons as a kid type, I probably went to a private school type. No, thank you. Sorry. Not this song. Not this song. Well, I'm not a professional. Well, neither am I. But... And then I'll leave. Well, clearly someone's trying to think of a way not to get kicked out. So, who's the girl? Girl you're singing about. There is no girl. I know. Yeah, that's why you loaded the question that way. Okay, that is very manipulative. It's literally using sexuality as a mechanism, but it's it's pretty cruel. But then again, you're in a fucking zombie apocalypse. There are so many things here. What's your name? Go take a shower, Bill. Really good acting. But you can definitely tell who the emotionally vulnerable one is. Now comes the real question. Is what I'm doing is wrong? I mean, I want to survive and I don't want to be kicked out, but I am manipulating someone emotionally that I probably don't have any feelings for. Who just played a sad love song about emotional pain of love? Who probably has some emotional scars? Fuck.
Fucked situation to be in. That's the issue with having things people want, but can't easily acquire. It attracts phony people who just want your stuff and not you. Well, here's the funny thing. And you guys are going to find this funny. The wealthiest people I know, you wouldn't be able to pick it. You wouldn't be able to pick it. You wouldn't. Because they don't flash it. Like, there's one guy, and I'm not even exaggerating this. I was on a plane trip, and I was talking to him. And I know him, so I, like, I see him on a regular basis. And I knew he had money, but I didn't know how much. And we just ended up talking about properties and real estate. Because... It was a conversation he wanted to have on an airplane. Why not? Let's talk properties in real estate. And I ended up mentioning this property that was here in the Sydney eastern suburbs that was selling for $15 million. It was just listed. I just mentioned it for like, we were talking about some architecture or some heritage listed homes or something like that. And the house came up. It was around $15 million. And we're on this plane trip, right? On the way back uh, from interstate. And we were, I think it was like Sunday afternoon. And I mentioned it. On Monday afternoon, there was a sold sign in front of the house. He ended up buying it for cash. I shit you not. He lives in the most expensive suburb in Sydney, overlooking the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. Like, probably easily $60 million house. Can buy shit like this, like, whenever he wants. And he drives, like, a 30-year-old Range Rover. He wears jeans, like, comfortable, nice jeans, but, like, nothing flashy. T-shirt, comfortable shirt, nothing flashy. Doesn't have an expensive watch or anything, just like a watch. Or like a fucking standard watch, like nothing crazy. Uh, just, just chill dude. You wouldn't pick it. I'm fucking telling you, you would not pick it. You would not pick it. And there's a couple of other people that I know. Uh, you would not pick it. You really wouldn't. And I, I learned from a lot of... Uh, you know, these types of people. And I, and I kind of learned from listening to the stories uh, of people that do flash wealth. They keep attracting the wrong people and they get burnt for it. And it's particularly like I met some people when they were a lot younger. Like, you know, when we were going out and we were like 18, 19. And they had cash. And so they flashed it, right? And when you're 18, 19 and you've got cash and you can buy anything at the bar and you buy people drinks. Everyone wants to be a friend, Right? And it gets to their head with top shit and all this sort of stuff. It's just like, like, you do you, man, right? <laughs> but whenever the drinks aren't coming, there's no people. Whenever there's no, like, skipping the queue, tables, and all this sort of stuff, there's no girls. And the girls that were around eventually leave. And then it's like, wh why? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? And then finally, they put two and two together. It's like, I have the wrong people. They're not actually my friends. They don't actually like me. And it's just like, took you long enough, buddy. <laughs> it's like, but how do I actually find people that like me? And it's like, by being yourself. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, what the fuck do you want to wear? What the fuck do you want to drive? What the fuck do you want to do? And what the fuck do you want to drink? Don't buy it just because it's fucking expensive. Don't wear it just because it's got a logo. It's like, you've been playing this all wrong, man. Uh, but in this scenario, it's fucked. Like, okay, if, if, we are, if we are in a contemporary society, it's 2023 with no zombie apocalypse. And I'm going to call it the zombie apocalypse, so... Zombie infected, whatever. Zombie apocalypse. Uh, and you're effectively using people to get something from them. It's pretty black and white that that's wrong. Particularly if you're raised and you're in a country like, you know, I'll use Australia for an example. You have more than enough opportunity to get whatever you want. So if you're manipulating someone, particularly emotionally, romantically or otherwise, in order to get something they have, that's cruel. I, I'm kind of hoping that most people would agree with this. There is something really wrong with that. 
particularly if the person's clearly emotionally vulnerable and hurt and all these other like it's wrong i'm hoping most people agree with this right but then we have the flip side where it's a matter of survival now i'm not just gonna green light it and say if it's a matter of survival it's okay blanket rule like you can do no wrong but I would say that it's slightly different because this guy probably doesn't have the survival skills the other guy has, right? He's like, if what he's saying is true, he's in a group of 10 from whatever the QZ zone was. He's probably one of the people that's left. Clearly the group didn't survive for whatever reason, whether it be they fell down a hole or got infected or otherwise, right? He's got next to... No equipment with him. No backpack. No supplies. Nothing. Probably doesn't even know exactly where he's going. He's like roughly going in the right direction, but probably not. It's very different to where we are now in society. Can That being the circumstance, I can understand it. The desperation of not wanting to get kicked outside where there's infected uh, particularly you know like he's got the safe zone he's got gates he's got food he's got you, you know like i can understand it but at the same time i'm just like oh my god this guy's gonna get so hurt you get what i mean i can understand it but i don't like it but i can understand it but I don't like it. <sighs> Poor guy. Like, like that's what fucks me. If 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 he was able to do something like else, like, okay, the guy can look after himself. The guy can cook. The guy can do all this shit. But if he was able to offer something, like, if the, if the say for example the guy couldn't cook. And you miraculously cook really fucking well. You're bringing value, right? You're, you're not relying on emotional manipulation in order to get a place at the dinner table. You're bringing something to the dinner table. I wouldn't feel bad for him. It wouldn't be emotional manipulation. It would be like, okay, I might not be able to hunt and kill infected, but I could do this, this, and this, and this, right? Like, I can make things here better. But now we're just for fucking... It's like, what are you bringing to the table if not emotional manipulation? You know what I mean? It's just... Damn it, man! I'd see the kiss as the signal to shoot this guy and use him as fertilizer and gunpowder ingredients. I don't trust people who do untrustworthy things and act desperate. I don't trust him either. Like, I distrusted him from the beginning. You know? Uh, but I'm trying to look at it from his point of view. Without being judgmental. But I also feel fucking horrible for the other guy. I know it's a show, but this shit fucking happens, alright? So, like, yeah. Ah, I fucking hate humans sometimes. See, this is the, the, the fucking manipulation. Like, I hate emotional manipulators. Particularly romantically emotional manipulators because I know how much you can fuck up people. They get too hard about gay cowboys in a zombie apocalypse. Because I'm not looking at it as two gay guys. I'm looking at it as two people. The fact that it's two guys doesn't really change the dynamic all much because emotional range is very similar amongst humans and you can have very... Uh, high levels of empathy in both male and females and very low levels of empathy in males and females so that doesn't make a huge difference yes there's some dynamical differences and physiological differences but it's still two fucking humans interacting i might be wrong here but bear with me on this one Seriously, how can you fake a smile? Like, what's the internal monologue? Like, how do you rationalize this to yourself?
Please tell me I'm not about to get banned on Twitch. Like, at least keep it MA15+. plus. Please, I don't want to get banned. My boobs are not big enough to do illegal shit on Twitch. Have you ever done this before? Not with anyone? With a girl a long time ago. This just makes it worse! I'm gonna start with the simple things. <laughs> okay. Okay. But before I do, I want you to know that I'm not a whore. I don't have sex for lunches. Is that what you tell yourself? Not even great ones. So if I do this, I'm gonna stay for a few more days. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's unfair. If I was a lawyer, I'd say, Your Honor, my client was not in the right state of mind when he made that commitment. And uh, the other side would say, how do you figure? And I'm going to say, well, the blood wasn't exactly going to his head at the time. I'm not about to be banned on Twitch, am I? Keep the camera up here, please. I don't want to be terminated for TOS. Oh, fuck you! Come on! Hey! Three years later? Stop? Do I ask for things? Ever? Um... It, I mean... You kind of did, the whole village. Why am I even saying that? This isn't for me. This is this is for us. Who cares what they look like? I do. Our home isn't just our house. It's everything around us. Give me a fucking break. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I live in this world. You live in a psycho bunker where 9-11 was an inside job and, and the government are all Nazis. The government are all Nazis! Well, yeah, now, but not then. So what? Now they're all Nazis and before they weren't? When, when did the stripes change? Was it when they put people in the ditches and shot them at the back of the head? Like it was China in the days of Mao? Or was it just now when it's common knowledge? Wait, so you're having a fight because you want to redecorate? So basically you move into this man's village and you want to change shit. And he's like, why do you care? And you're like, because I care. And I'm like... What kind of counter-argument is that? I am asking for some paint and some gasoline for the lawnmower, that's all. I'll do everything else myself. It is not Bill, a man- you say resource management? So help me, I will run through one of your tripwires. You do realize you can use one of those push mowers. And not use fuel. I mean, by all means, go for the paint. But, like, don't fuck up the gasoline. Okay, okay. Just tell me why. I did. Paying attention to things. It's how we show love. This is my street, too. Just, just let me love it the way I want to. And I'm fixing up some of the shops. Whoa. whoa Not the whoa. stupid ones, just the, the wine shop and the furniture store. And the clothing boutique. The boutique? So basically we've gone from repainting the houses to fixing up the shops and other shit. And where does it end? Are, are we hosting formal garden parties now? No. But we are going to have friends. What?! 
Excuse me? We're gonna make friends. And we will invite them to visit. With whose fucking resources and food? Do you realize how much effort goes into maintaining power, gas, hot water, heating, and gardens? Sure, I mean, like, if you want to invite friends over, you're gonna help out with the farming, right? You're gonna make sure that the crops are planted, the land is plowed, and the thing is harvested before the storm season. You're gonna do all that, right? We don't have friends, Frank. We will never have friends because there are no friends to be had. Well, I've actually been talking to a nice woman on the radio. Oh, for the love of... Oh, God! Oh, God! Yeah, a nice fucking woman on the radio who just so happens to be working for the goddamn government, probably. See, this is... Fuck me! I was being a nice guy here! Understanding! Looking at things from your point of view and not being judgmental! But right now, you're a fucking liability! What? Did you also tell them where you're located? Oh, we're located here and here. Longitude and latitude so and so. Yeah, there's enough room to land a fucking helicopter. What else the fuck did you tell them? You what? Yeah, exactly. Fucking shoot him at the back of the head. You have my permission. Well, this really is just pretty it's amazing. Right? Watch, and now they're gonna wanna stay. The other guy's gonna offer to let them stay. It's the fucking hell. And they're not gonna do anything. They're not gonna do the security perimeter. They're not gonna gather resources. They're not even gonna help with farming. So you've now gone uh, resource consumption from 100% to 400% with no increase in production whatsoever. And guess what? They're gonna wanna invite their own friends. Everything that he said early on Fucking came true. You're gonna talk to some bum, and now they're gonna want free lunch too. I ain't gonna talk to no bums. Three years later. Can you not, please? Oh, well this went- wait, what? The same way. Oh, you're a paranoid schizophrenic too? Oh, now you're gonna insult the man in his own home. A paranoid schizophrenic. Bill, blow his fucking brains out. This paranoid schizophrenic saw this shit a mile away and ended up creating this place. And you're just now gonna insult him. So you, who in no way, in any shape or form, helped contribute to creating this sanctuary, is gonna insult the guy that built it. Now that's just disrespectful. It's almost like you forgot everything that he's done for you. Or maybe you just never cared to begin with. Fucking champagne socialist. I'm not schizophrenic. <clears throat> well, can I just say, uh, gun aside, which I get, by the way. How nice this is to have a civilized meal in such a beautiful place. It's been so long. I mean, it. I just uh, I want to thank you, even if we don't end up working together. I really needed this. We are working together. Sir, you have never done a sales negotiation in your life. You don't just give someone the green light that you will work with them without negotiating the terms first. You've just lost all of your leverage. Now get back into the fucking IT department and stop talking sales. We are. Really? Wow, thanks for having that discussion and coming to a mutual agreement. You know what? Let's go inside. Tess, I want to show you something. Actually, no. I have been wanting to see inside. Not inside. Thank you. Yes. Frank! <laughs> Frank! Songs. <laughs> I understand. If my, uh, if mine brought strangers into our situation, I wouldn't be happy either. But of all the people he could have found on the radio, were actually decent people just trying to get by. I hope you realize that you can't just accept that at face value. Oh. 
Well, aren't I the lucky one? There's stuff we have in the QZ that you don't have here. Books, medicine, machine parts. We can help each other and get that gun out of my face. Remember that thing I told you about a cross draw? You might want to invest in learning how to do that. That is the world's most awkward way to draw it. Yes, I get it, Hutchin. You have to dry your hair because you took a shower. We call this passive-aggressive. But what she doesn't realize is I can just turn off the microphone. So what, you were a... Uh, prepper or something? Survivalist. Maybe you are decent people. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. We're self-sufficient here. I don't need you or your friend complicating our lives. Is that clear? That fence has got a year on it, tops. Galvanized wire already started to corrode. If I can get you 10 spools of high tensile aluminum, last you the rest of your life. See, he is demonstrating value. Lives. Are you sure about this? Are you sure he hasn't worked in sales before? Yeah, I mean, it's not a gift. You come back, we'll trade. All right. Oh, and I have this idea that we should, uh, we should use codes for the radio in case anyone's listening. So basically you gave her something which you don't even own as a gift without telling the guy who probably owns it. Uh, let's just hope that it's not his mother's. And yeah, you guys are the code on the radio, I get you. Oh, that's a good idea. Like, like what? Like, I was thinking, like, is that like, like Amy's trouble? Yeah. Edra's never going to come up here. Yeah. And you're well protected against stray infected. But sooner or later, <laughs> there'll be raiders. And they'll beat that fence and your tripwires. Oh they'll come at night, quiet and armed. We'll be fine. Bill, how would you like to create some Claymore mines? They don't have to be modern. We can do tripwire Claymore mines, proximity Claymore mines, hell, even remote detonator Claymore mines. Three years later. Ah, the elements. Pick it up. I can't. I can't. Just one more loop around. I got something to show you. What did you do? Huh? Not that. Huh? You're right there. You can make it. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't compromise the security. It's okay. Ready? Yes. <laughs> oh. I traded Joel and Tess one of your guns for a packet of seeds. You what? Which gun? A little one. Witch gun?
Because what some people do when they don't use pesticides is they use certain plants which repel insects and they put it on the outer perimeter and then they create rows of plants that don't repel insects and then they have a row of plants which do repel insects and then that way you can do farming without using pesticides. How the hell do I know this about farming? Good, they're catching rainwater. Oh no, the raiders. This is perfect cover for noise. The yeah, here they come. Oh, here comes the gas! My boy built an improvised flamethrower. I thought they were just for shooting fireworks. Bill! Bill! I mean, if this shit doesn't wake you up. Grab a shotgun. That's a 22, unless you hit it in something soft like an eyeball, that's not gonna take anyone down. Why are you opening the front? You were under. You're in a building, they don't know you're there, you got plenty of cover. Instead, you go out through the fucking front door in a brightly lit street. Look, if he gets shot, I don't give a fuck. This is Darwinism at work here. Oh yeah, just fucking run across the front yard with absolutely no cover whatsoever. No one's gonna see you. You're a liability in here. Get the fuck inside, you're gonna distract him. Burn, baby, burn. Bell. Bell. Get See, that's what happens when he gets distracted. You fuck! No. We gotta get you inside. No! No! Bell. No! Inside now! Hold on to me! I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> uh, at least they got the part about the sparks, right? They turn on the sparks before the gas. That's how you make a flamethrower. Because if you release the gas before the sparks, that's how you get an explosion. Ah! Now, Bill, I gotta start asking questions. How do you not have body armor? Well, we got a problem because you're gonna have to remove the bullet and then stop the bleeding. And then you don't strike me as the type to do it. Hold your hand there for me. Hold, hold your hand there. Frank. Frank! 
Frank! I'm right here. Frank! I'm right here. Leave the gas on. I'm right here. Leave the gas on. Right here. The fence. The fence will kill the rest of them. Okay. Yeah. I made a list for you. Uh-huh. Tell me about the list. I have copies of, of all the keys. Good. Kill him off. Bell. Mm. That's getting cold. Okay. Let me bring it inside now. Wait, how is this guy in a wheelchair? Ten years later. Okay. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll get you warmed up. You see, this is one of the sad realities of life. No matter how well you can maintain yourself, you will eventually get old. And you will eventually need other people. So if you're a dick all your life to everyone around you, have fun with that. Cancer? Very possible. Or it could be another disease which slowly starts degrading the body. It could be anything. And trust me, some of them are worse than others. this safe land if it will go to waste when you're gone tell that to the people that have billions of dollars and have no intent of doing anything with it he's gonna ask him to help him end it isn't he Take your pills? Oh, no. So look at that, before he could paint his face, no problem. This time around, he couldn't paint it.
Question, how the hell did he get out of bed by himself? Took most of the night. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Answers that question. God damn it. You gotta be kidding me. I don't want you falling asleep in the chair. I won't. You will, and then your feet get blue. No. I'm not fighting about it. Back in I bed. I promise you I'm gonna stay up. Why? Because this is my last day. No, oh, he is gonna ask. What? What if we find a doctor? What if? What if someone shows up who can help? Who's coming, Bill? The door-to-door -door MRI salesman. <laughs> there wasn't anything to cure this before the world fell apart. I've made up my mind. And so it is cancer. Oof. Bill. Bill. Day was a wonderful gift from God speech. I have had a lot of bad days. I've had bad days with you, too. But I've had more good days with you than with anyone else. Just give me one more good day. Starting now, make me some toast. <laughs> then take me to the boutique where I'll pick outfits for us. You'll wear what I ask. And we'll get married. And you cook a delicious dinner. Then you will crush all of these up, put them in my wine. I will drink it. Take me by my hand. Bring me to our bed. And I will fall asleep in your arms. Fuck.
It's the rabbit, isn't it? It's the rabbit and the wine. So now they're no longer on opposite sides of the table. That's cute. That's cute. And he can't hold it the other way anymore. Fuck. He even twisted it at the end. Fucking hell, man. I don't know how the F that just dissolved into the wine, but enough of that for now. If he's lucky, it's just muscle or relaxing and he'll simply go to sleep and never Why wake up. Already pills in the bottle. Enough to kill a horse. This isn't the tragic suicide at the end of the play. I'm old. I'm satisfied. And you were my purpose. I do not support this. Oh, I should be furious. But from an objective point of view, It's incredibly romantic. Wait, sorry, I must be misunderstanding. Did he spike the wine in the bottle and he's also gonna die? <laughs> I think so. Take me to bed.
So they moved it downstairs. Good call. And I'm guessing they're gonna discover them laying peacefully in bed. You see, the okay. Can we be serious here for a minute? This is how you write something that's not in a game. That has soul in it. I was gonna say this is ten times better than the two of them just splitting up. Alright? This, like, green tick of approval. Because it's thought out, well written, with good impact, has an excellent story. This is good shit. Did they send them the code or something? Oh, he's got the code. So that was the signal? Bad news? Yeah, he knows something's up. The flowers haven't been watered. And the door's unlocked. He knows something's up. What the fuck? Bill? No signs of a struggle. Frank. You know, that's more creepy than anything. Stay there. You hear anything, you see anything, yell. What if they're gone? Gone to where? Just don't drink the wine. Ah, the food's already rotting, so it's been a while. A few days, I'd say. Maybe a week. Please don't give away your position. Oh god, this girl needs to learn so much. So they're dead. Mm -hmm. At least read it, goddammit. You you wanna Oh come on, Joel. Go ahead, you do it. Okay, that works. August twenty nine, twenty twenty three. If you find this, please do not come into the bedroom. We left the window open so the house wouldn't smell. It will probably be a sight. I'm guessing you found this, Joel, because anyone else would have been electrocuted or blown up by one of my traps. <laughs> <laughs> Take anything you need. The bunker code is the same as the gate code, but in reverse. Clever. Anyway, I never liked you. But still, it's like we're friends. Almost. And I respect you. So I'm gonna tell you something because you're probably the only person who will understand. I used to hate the world and I was happy when everyone died. But I was wrong. 
because there was one person worth saving. That's what I did. I saved him. Then I protected him. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do. And God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment. Use them to keep... Mmm, test safe. Oh, mmm. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. Ooh. Ah, mm. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe you should have read a little ahead. Uh, could have stopped the sentence sooner. Could have stopped that, leave you all my equipment. Oof. Damn it, Ellie! Oh. Joel, it wasn't your fault. Night. Oh, God damn it, poor guy. Is it his truck or is it like a Mustang? Nah, it's the truck. He took the battery out. Well, if you leave it connected, it's gonna drain. There's probably one just sitting there. Yep, see what I mean? making a truck battery it's charging right now okay and i have a brother out in wyoming he's in some kind of trouble and i'm heading out there to find him he used to be a firefly so my guess is he knows where some of them are out there maybe they can get you to wherever this lab is all right uh, listen about tests i wouldn't if i'm taking you with me there's some rules you gotta follow Rule one, you don't bring up Tess, ever. Yeah, best Matter not of fact, to. we can just keep our histories to ourselves. Mm. Rule two, you don't tell anyone about your condition. Mm-hmm. They see that bite mark, they won't think it through, they'll just shoot you. Mm. Rule three, you do what I say when I say it. We clear? Yes. Repeat it. What you say goes. To answer your question about would a car battery even work, he didn't have a car battery already built, he created one. So all the components were kept separate. So it wouldn't rust and all these other things. A lot of the modern day electronics equipment we have, because it's compiled in such a way all the different elements start causing problems, start causing rust and all these other things. By building the car battery on the spot, you pretty much create a new one. It might not be as strong as, you know, like... The one you pick up at the store, but all it really needs to do is start the car. Once the engine's actually started, the engine itself can charge the battery. You just need it to do the jump start, that's it. Okay. So what now? Probably turn off the lights. And grab what we can. guy was a genius why was the music on if you didn't reset the countdown every few weeks this playlist would run over the radio 80s grab some cans from over there nothing dented or swollen 
Dude. No. There's a wall of them. And you look pretty. Shut up. Nice. It's like a road trip. First time in a car? It's like a spaceship. No, it's like a piece of shit Chevy S10, but it'll get us there. I think. Seatbelt. Seatbelt. Ooh. So yeah, this is, this is, the, yeah, he's gonna soften up really quick now. Low on fuel. Can I just be a dick and say that the bedroom was on the first floor and not the second floor so it wouldn't have that point of view of the front yard? But... It wouldn't be me if I don't point that shit out. Their old bedroom, yeah. With the painting. With the window open. Look, this is a lot better than what was in the game.
for this section. Because you didn't need to do the whole thing that was in the game. The missions, the bullshit, the arguing, the stuff that was like, fuck it. The guy appears once. You give him his backstory. It's something new. It's something unique. It has flavor. You can tell a story that you want to tell. You can change it up as much as you want without messing up a lot of other things. And I got to admit that it was very well done. And that's coming from someone that's actually played the game and loved the game to bits. I thought the game was awesome. But I like this of this section a lot more. It added depth to it. It added a lot to it. Uh, initially, you could probably see that I was a little bit like, this is going to go really badly. Because from what I know in the game, it's not going to last. So this was a very pleasant surprise and was very nice. It, it was nice. It was nice. But it was a story. And yeah, we spent two hours watching it. Discussing it. It was, it was good shit. This was a really good episode. Really good episode. Good writing. Phenomenal acting. The acting was on point. You have to admit. It was good. And then the makeup crew aging them as well. It was really well done. It was good. It gets a clap. I give credit where credit is due. And this was good. Really well done. Really well. Tastefully done. It, 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 it explored a lot of elements. There was a lot in there. Really, there was a lot in there. And I liked how it was handled. I like it. It was handled really well. Good credit to this episode. Really good episode. No. See, this is the type of thing that makes me want to recommend this show. This episode in particular. Really well done. Really well done. It's really good. I don't think there can be anyone out there that is going to say this episode is shit. That there's, there is next to nothing to bring it down. Cinematically, it's beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. Really good. Story point, really good. Character interaction, really good. Added a bit of backstory. Added a little test. Gave a little bit to the smuggling route. Gave a little bit of character depth. Explored a character you only see once. Advanced the story. Gave them equipment. Changed the clothes around. Like, functionally and cinematic-wise, it was beautifully done. I've seen a few disliking it because there wasn't much of Joel and Ellie, but that's about it. The biggest dislike is that it wasn't a Joel and Ellie episode. God forbid they ever watch anime and get a filler arc. They would probably kill themselves. I was pleasantly surprised with the new ending with Bill and Frank. Yes. Agreed. I thought it was probably going to go the way that it was previously. I thought that argument they had about painting the houses was going to lead to something worse. Uh, you could probably tell that I was sort of feeling that it was going to go in that direction. But I'm really pleasantly surprised that he didn't. I'm really happy that it didn't. It added so much more depth. A lot more depth this way. Uh, to both characters. To both... I mean, granted, we only saw Bill in the game, really. But it added a lot of... De it, it, it added a very human element. There was a lot of humanity in this one. There was a lot in it. There was survival... There was being self-sufficient, there was loneliness, there was fear, there was sexuality, there was love, there was getting old, there was not wanting to be a burden to other people. There was, there was a very human element to it. Huh. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit emotional thinking about the getting old bit and about Bill deciding that he would rather die with his partner than live alone. There's a lot of depth to that. There's a lot. It's very human and very well done. You're not going to get me like this very often. So I'm very impressed and very happy with this episode. Phenomenal. 
Phenomenally done. Very good. We need more of this. We need more of this. Alright, guy. guys. Sorry. Guy. I'm sounding like a South Park episode. Hey, guy. <laughs> I'm sounding like a South Park Canadian. Um, let's take a quick little break and we're going to watch Avatar. We've got three episodes of Avatar back to back, so it's going to be a chunky one. For those of you that have been waiting for, uh, for Avatar, I apologize for the delay. Usually these episodes are no longer than an hour and usually they don't give us as much content to sink our teeth into, but this was enjoyable, so I hope you enjoyed it as well. So we're going to take a break and we're going to watch some Avatar. <sighs> also, his bunker and guns were a sight to behold. I've seen better. Um, but let's not, uh, let's not judge him on that one. <laughs> I don't see enough Soviet firearms in that bunker, but anyway. He's an American. He's an American. I, I can respect the patriotism. I can respect that. I won't hold it against him. I mean, he had an M1 Grant in the corner. I can respect that. It's a classic. I can respect that. Uh, he had an R700 as a sniper rifle. I can respect that. It's, it's an accurate rifle, is all hell. Very accurate, very good. The Marine Corps loves it. All right, guys, quick little break, and we're going to watch some Avatar. That was, that was, that was good. All right, quick little break, quick little break. 